God, are y'all ready for the word? What a church. What an awesome church. Oh, my God. And Sunday school was so dynamic. And 10 o'clock word with Sister Kamitra Clark. She was just explosive. And Penny opening prayer. And MIT Princess opening prayer. <laughs> Princess got her own names. She said, give me that credit for praying to the chairs. Princess and MIT Amber and our second Sunday school teacher, Keisha. And speaking of MIT Amber, she's been dropping some great knowledge lately. And just sharing the word with my God, so many different people, and I had to snap, I got a counter rise of revelation she gave me a week or so ago. I said, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to keep this revelation for myself. I said, I ain't, I ain't sharing this with nobody except Jesus People Church on a Sunday morning. Then we're going to share it to the world. So y'all ready for this word? Everybody stand with me to Philippians chapter 3. It should be on the screen, Philippians 3. We're going to read two verses, 13 and 14. Somebody shout, I got it when you got it. Thank you, Jesus. God, I feel the fresh word coming like never before. Philippians 3 and 13, it reads, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, tell us about I can do this, I can do this. Forgetting those things which are behind, Somebody shout, forget those things which are behind. And reaching forth those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want to use as a title of this message, what's going on is better than what's gone. Look at you and say, neighbor, what's going on is better than what's gone. Now, I don't understand if you don't know how to get the revelation of what's going on is better than what's gone. But a lot of people still crying over what's gone. A lot of people still bitter about what's gone. A lot of people still sad and sick and disgusted about what's gone. But if you really got some good things going on, you can't be worried about what's gone. Because what you had in the past kept you stagnant. What you had in the past, it kept you stuck. What you had in the past, it kept you afraid. It kept you scared. But once you start having some stuff going on in God, once you start pressing toward the prize in God, you don't have time to dwell about the stuff from yesterday. You don't have time to worry about the stuff that broke your heart, that hurt your feelings, that made you sad, that sent you to counseling, the people that rape you, the people that discourage you, the people that did you wrong. You got to learn how to have some stuff going on. When you get some stuff going on, you won't ever cry no more about the stuff that's gone. Tell us about it. You won't cry no more about the stuff that's gone when you start having some stuff that's going on. Preach holy ghost. There's a Greek word for the word that means forgetting. And it means, the, the Greek word for forgetting is epilanthri onihi. Epilanthri ohini. Epilanthri ohini. And it means to no longer care for. So in the Greek, when they say, I forget something, that means I don't care about that anymore. You got to learn how to stop caring about stuff that no longer exists in your life. If people have been forgot about you, why are you still remembering them? Why are you still resurrecting people that don't care nothing about you? They got the audacity to walk away from you. They got the audacity to forget about everything that you've done for them. If people can say, I don't care about you, then you got to learn how not to care about your past. Good God Almighty. We used to say growing up at Orange Bound, forget you, forget you, I never thought about you. <laughs> we didn't let stuff linger in our minds long. We didn't have a hangover over our past. We didn't have a hangover over our pain. We didn't have a hangover over the people that did us wrong because we knew that there was something else in my future that I had to press for. There was something else in my future that God wanted to have me to be a blessing to others. And you can't be a blessing to others when you're still crying about your past. People dwelling on the past is like a person that's still crying over the decayed tooth <laughs> that the dentist pulled out of their mouth years ago. Why are you still crying over the decayed tooth? 
that used to cause you pain. If God pulled that thing out of your life, why are you still crying about it? The people that we crying and upset over, they are cavities. Good God Almighty. And you did everything you can to make it better. But the toothpaste didn't help. The floss didn't help. The cleaning didn't help. Because you had what they call a bad tooth. And when you got bad stuff, sometimes stuff that's bad for you is meant for you to let it go. Can I give you three reasons why what I got going on is better than what's gone? I'm going to give you three reasons why what I got going on is better than what's going on. Number one, my peace is better. Yeah, my, my, my peace is better. I had some stuff in my past that did not give me any peace. They did not give me any joy. They gave me nothing but stress. But when I'm pressing toward the prize, that means I got more peace now. My peace is better right now. Just to have the peace that I have is much better than what I had back then. Just to have the peace of God is blowing my mind. I got peace in places that I didn't even know existed. In my past, I had pain and worry. I had stain. I was stained and in a hurry. But since I got serious with God, I got a peace that passed all understanding. That's what the word said in Philippians 4 and 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. I used to think that I couldn't make it without certain people. I used to think that I couldn't make it without certain things. I used to think that I couldn't make it when my father died when I was 12 years old. But I got a peace that passed so much understanding, I don't even know why I got as much joy as I got. But there's a peace that I got now. There's a peace that comes with pressing. There's a peace that comes. I got peace everywhere. When you stop dealing with fools, you get a peace all over your life. <laughs> when you stop dealing with nuts, you get a peace in my shop everywhere. I'm going to give you a few places where I got peace here. I got peace now in my mind. Philippians 4 and 7, in the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. Test about it. My mind is stayed on God now. See, when you didn't have peace in your mind, your mind was stayed upon mess. When you didn't have peace on your mind, your mind was stayed upon foolishness. Because that's all the people in the past that were bringing to your life, mess, junk, and foolishness. But when you got peace in your mind, that means you ain't thinking about nobody. You're not worried about anything. You're not staying up late in the middle of the night anymore. You're not wondering who coming home or who ain't. You ain't wondering about who going to do what to you when they get there. You got peace in your mind. Good God Almighty. Tell somebody, I need peace in my mind. I need, I need peace in my mind. It's terrible to have beautiful weather but a storm in your mind. And people can't even enjoy the rain or the sunshine out there because their mind is so messed up in here. Good God Almighty. Not only do I have peace in my mind, but secondly, I got peace in my money. Yeah, I got peace in my money now. Why do I have peace in my money? Because Matthew 7 and 6, it said, Give not that which is holy upon to dogs, neither cast your pearls unto swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn around and renew. See, when you was dealing with fools, your money was troubled. You were both busted and disgusted because what? You was casting your pearls onto swine. But when I stopped dealing with the wrong folks, huh, I stopped blessing the wrong folks. Huh. Now my money is at peace. Huh. My money is stacking up because I ain't casting my pearls onto swine. Many of us will be a lot richer than we already are, but the fools in our lives. Bruce Daly told me something that blew my mind. He said, man, stop casting your money. Stop casting your seed on concrete. Stop casting. What does it mean to stop casting your seed onto concrete? You're blessing people and giving to people and ain't nothing coming back from it. Nothing's growing from it. Nothing's manifested from it. They ain't praying for you, interceding for you. They ain't helping you in no kind of thing. And you're trying to win their friendship and they you casting your pearls onto concrete. They still going to be unthankful. And your money is upset at you. Your money is mad at you because it's that you blessing the wrong people. <laughs> your money is saying they treat you like a fool and you feel, you know your money is mad when you feel bad after you help somebody. 
You know you might feel. Have you ever felt like a fool after you done bless somebody? Have you ever done helped somebody say, man, they ain't even say thank you. They don't even look up. They ain't even appreciative. They act like I ain't did nothing for them. They, they scared to even, when people scared to testify, you helped them. They said, the Lord bless me real good. The Lord gave you, they gave you the whole outfit you got on. Oh, the Lord blessed me so good today. Everybody, they compliment me. They ain't said, you sit right over there and they ain't said a word. And you looking at them like, ain't this a trip? Ain't this some junk? <laughs> Don't cast your pearls onto swine. When you get an alarm that keep going out of your mind every time you bless them, uh, there's something wrong with them people. I mean, you casting your pearls on this wine. But right now, because I have to learn how to forget them things that are behind, I got peace in my money. <laughs> my, my, my money's resting so good and so at ease because it ain't going to no kind of swine. Preach, Holy Ghost. Not only to have peace in my mind and peace in my money, but thirdly, I got peace in my madness. Now, you know it's powerful when you got real peace, stuff, all hell and high water could be going on around you. But you still got peace in your madness. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellency of the power of God will be of him and not of us. For we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. He said, baby, I got peace in my madness now. I ain't messed up about what's going on in my life. I'm not messed up about being by myself. I'm not messed up about my family not having all the money that I think we should have. I got peace in my madness. Let me give you one of the realest thoughts ever taught, number 444. You know you're in the right relationship when even your arguments are peaceful. I'm gonna say again, you know you're in the right relationship. I'm like this. When even your arguments are peaceful. When you're dealing with fools and you arguing with these nuts and you don't know if you're gonna live after this argument or not. And you feel like they're gonna walk out from you because of an argument. You feel like they're gonna run off and be with somebody else because you're telling them the truth about you in the wrong relationship. You start feeling like this man gonna kill me. Or this woman going to kill me? We know you're in the right relationship when you got peace even in an argument. Good God Almighty. That's when God wants to give you perfect peace. Even in the madness, even in the storm, you still feel peace. You still feel the love is still there. You still feel this, uh, this is only a disagreement. It ain't nothing. It's hard for me to talk to me. And I'm, I'm, some people you can't even talk to. Some people, you try to just tell them the truth. Oh, I don't want to know. Oh, you ain't raising your voice. You ain't getting loud. You just, I just want to bring this to your attention. You always show your. You know what? Never mind. Never mind. I can't talk to you. I can't listen. When people stop telling you about you, that's a red flag. That's a danger zone. You ought to be thankful when somebody can bring something to your attention. When, when you're in a relationship and people can't tell you anything anymore, that means it's about to be a breach. That's not good for us. Because God said, if I can't discipline you, then you are bastards and none of mine. Good God Almighty. That's what the Lord said. What's going on is better than what's going. Why? Not only because my peace is better, but secondly, what's going on is better than what's going on because my praise is better. Uh -huh. my, my praise is better. Paul said, I'm forgetting those things which are behind and I'm reaching for the things which are before. See, I couldn't praise him right with all that mess in my life. So I had to forget those things which were behind. It's a difference in praising him because you're going through and praising him because he brought you out.
tell somebody, you got to develop a different praise. You got to develop a different praise. You got to learn how to develop a different praise. You got to learn how to develop a different praise. I don't praise him because I'm going through it anymore. I praise him because he done brought me out. I praise him because he done taught me how to press beyond my mess. I praise him because I ain't crying like I used to cry. I ain't worried about the stuff that I used to worry about. I ain't running up behind the post that I used to run behind. I'm not losing my mind anymore. I get to go to sleep at night. I'm praising him on a different praise now. Because man, I developed a different praise. I developed. Because I developed a different praise. I developed a different praise. High five three people and tell them, I developed a different praise. I develop a different praise. I develop a different praise. It's a difference in coming to church and I'm crying and broken and hurt and upset because these fools in my life. But now I'm praising him because he done brought me out. My mind is gone, even if they still around, but they're not around in my mind no more. I've learned how to whatsoever state that I'm in to therewith be content. I've learned how to both be a base and to be a power. Oh God, <laughs> it ain't in my mind no more. It ain't in my mind anymore. <laughs> See, see, it ain't in my mind anymore. Now, they got a vision board, and I got a, it came to pass board. <laughs> I got a, bam, I got a, it came to pass board. I praise them because it came to pass. Oh, God. Now, listen, now, listen, now, listen. I'm, I'm not knocking vision boards because they work. They work, they work. I, I, I wrote a lot of stuff down in 2019. If it came to pass, my God, you're going to see some stuff in 2020. But a lot of this stuff because I wrote down in 2019. I'm tired of this, I'm tired of that. I ain't dealing with this, I ain't dealing with this. This is what I want. This is what I'm going to see. This is what I'm going to deal with. This is the only standard I'm going to deal with. This is only going to be Proverbs 31. I ain't going to deal with all this foolishness, all this mess. I'm taking it to another level. And what, so a lot of stuff you're going to see because what? I wrote it down and it came to pass. Write the vision and make it plain. I'm not knocking vision, boys. They work, but let me tell you this praise also works. I'm going to tell you that now. Tell somebody, praise also works. Praise also works. Now let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. There are some things God does because you ask him. Then there are some things God does because you love him. Oh, don't, don't get it twisted now. You got to learn the art of doing both. Now, most people, they don't know how to do both. They write the vision board. But now, they ask him and it come to pass, but they don't know how to keep it. Because they don't love him. And if you ever lose the love of God, everything you ask for, he's going to take it back. I know people who've lost their ministry because they stopped loving God. I know people who've lost their healing because they stopped loving God. I know people who've lost their mind because they stopped loving God. Look at your name and say, neighbor, you got it because you asked him. But I keep it because I love him. If you understand that, God will never lose your blessings. He will never take your blessings back. If you never stop loving God, you got it made until you die and go to heaven. But the problem with people mess up, they know how to ask God, but they don't know how to love him. Listen, David did not have a vision board when he was getting ready to fight Goliath. All he had was the love of God. All he had in 1 Samuel, he said, I killed a lion and a bear. And this giant which defies the armies of the living God, I will kill this giant as well. Now, you did not have a vision board when you was trying to get that crazy man or crazy woman all your, out your life. All you had was a, help me, Jesus. All you had was, Lord, I need you. All you had was a, Lord, I got to make it out of this. All you had, Lord, if you just give me one more time. You ain't had time to go write nothing down. You ain't had time to cut no pictures. You ain't had time to find no glue. You ain't had time to find no staplers. All you had was a shout. Lord, I need you. 
I love Vision Boys. I'm not knocking Vision Boys. I write another one this week. But let me tell you something. Sometimes you need a cry. Sometimes you just got to know how to cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, I need you every hour. Lord, I need your hand. I need your touch. Lord, I need your deliverance. Lord, you got to learn how to cry out. Oh, God. You got to learn how to beseech the Lord and how to touch the hem of his garment. Moses didn't have a vision, boy, when he was trapped at the Red Sea. All he had was a Lord make a way. And the Lord made it a way out of no way. Peter didn't have a vision, boy, when he was walking on water. All he had was a Lord bid me to come. Bid me to come and I'll do it. You got to have a Lord bid me to come. Oh, God. I ain't knocking no vision, boy. Write the vision and make it plain. But learn how to call on God just the same. Learn how to praise his name just the same. Learn how to do it all. Tell about I got to know how to do it all. I've never seen anybody teach the vision more better than Penny Legrand did. I've never seen it. But it's my job as your pastor to add some more to it so you can be super califragic. And I'm not being precocious. Look at your name and say, neighbor, what's going on? It's better than what's going. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Not only is my peace better, not only is my praise better, but lastly, my prize is better. Uh-huh. Look at somebody say, neighbor, my, 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 my prize. My prize. My prize is better. My, 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 my prize is better. Philippians 3 and 13. Oh, God. Thank God for the clutch, saints. Philippians 3 and 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize. Somebody shout, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See, in my past, in our past, dealing with these jokers, all we had was a surprise. I'm surprised that you hurt me like you did. I'm surprised you treat me the way you do. I'm surprised that for my loving, this is all the junk I get. I'm surprised for all my goodness, this is the meanness that you give me back. I'm surprised for all my hard work. I can't even get a glass of water with some ice in it. When we dealing with these nuts, all we get is a surprise. But when you're dealing with God, you get a prize. You get a prize. But now I actually get love for my love. I get peace for my peace. One of the meanings of the word in Greek in prize, it means heavenly compensation for displaying Christian character. It's a heavenly compensation for displaying Christian character. Well, I used to tell Sister Adam back in the hotel, Sister Adam, God is going to bless us because ain't nobody serving him like us. I knew that we would get a prize because whoever served God the most, he usually, throughout the Bible, there's evidence that he blesses the most. He often throughout the Bible, I ain't talking about the people that I've seen even in the living. I've seen it happen in the living. But just in the Bible, I always saw that the people that cried out the most, the people that prayed the most, the people that fasted the most, the people that believed on him the most, the people that called him the most, he will always give them a prize. I don't know what, but God is about to bless me with something you ought to be able to say that to yourself, Kiara. God is about to bless me with something. God is about to bless me with something. I can feel it. It's supposed to happen. Let's get to a point when you serve God long enough, you start feeling that something is supposed to happen. I'm not supposed.
supposedly be in church with my head down. I'm not supposed to be broke, busted, and disgusted. I'm not supposed to be walking around with sickness in my body. Something is supposed to happen for me. I just got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. David did ask for the kingdom, but God said, it's your prize for loving me. David didn't ask for the kingdom. All David did was say, what's going to happen to the man that killed this Goliath? And he said, you're going to be the king's son-in-law. He said, I didn't ask to be the king's son-in-law. I didn't ask for the kingdom. But in 2 Samuel 7, 18, then it went King David in and sat before the Lord. And he said, who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou have brought me hitherto? David said, I didn't write it on my vision board. All I had on my vision board, they said, I just want to kill Goliath, be the king's son-in-law, have me a little house down the street from the king on King's Avenue. All I asked for was just five children. He said, all I asked for was food in the pantry. He said, That's, I didn't know that I was about to be the actual king. I didn't know that he was going to take the son-in-law part off and make me the king. But that's what happens when you love God. Because the Bible says that now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I'm able to ask or think. On your vision board, you ought to have a blank space. And when they say, what's that? You say, that's the spot where God's going to do something that I had no idea he was going to do. That's the spot huh, that God's going to do something that I didn't even know existed. That's the spot huh, that God's going to blow my mind. That God's going to do the unthinkable, the unconceivable. That's the spot that I can't even pray about because I don't even know I'm that gifted. I don't even know I got that much anointing. I don't even know I have a calling like that on my life. I didn't even know I can get what I just got. But that's the empty spot. That's the empty space I leave for God. So that, that's the spot that I'm like David. Who am I? See, I still like to get a prize. And when you get a prize, you got to be like, who, how you give me this? I'm not worthy of this. I like, I like when God give me the stuff I didn't pray about, I didn't ask him for, I didn't see it coming, I didn't believe that it was going to happen, I didn't know there was a way for it to happen. Everybody in here, you done got some stuff for God that have blown your mind and you had no idea it was coming. You had no idea it was coming. That's the relationship board. <laughs> <laughs> That's the relationship board then. You get some stuff just by being in relationship with God. <laughs> David had a relationship board. When God started giving you stuff that you had no idea existed, just about it, that came from my relationship. <laughs> David said, I can't believe it. David said, I can't believe this is mine. He said, I can't believe it. I don't deserve this. They said, it's shocking me that you're doing this for me. Listen, listen to what he said in Acts 13, 22. This is the last section. He said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. That's my relationship, which shall fulfill all of my will. God is just looking to bless somebody that's after his heart. God is just looking to give a prize to somebody that's really seeking him for real. He's going to give it to somebody. Why not you? Somebody going to get the blessings. Somebody going to get the overflow. Why can't it be us, church? Why can't we be the ones to get it all in the name of Jesus? Let me say, neighbor, what's going on is better than what's gone. Because my heart is after God. 
Paul didn't ask to become the number one apostle. But that was his prize for being zealous for God. He said in Galatians 1 and 1, Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised them from the dead. God said, man didn't anoint me. Man didn't appoint me. This came from God. I told MIT, I told MIT, and she was, she was working on her lesson. She's still new in ministry, so we got to train her the best we can. So I told her, I said, there was a point when I was a minister in training, and I knew I was different. Because when I was studying the Sunday school lesson in the commentary, which I always have to do anyway, but the revelation God gave me, it went in there. When I was studying the Matthew Hemi commentary, the revelation God gave me, it went in there. And, and I'm looking around and saying, now hold on. These folks been in God for decades. I'm just burping myself, getting myself together. God, are you talking to me like this? Are you giving me revelation that even your scholars ain't ever been seen and put in writing? And I'm searching several different books, and they still ain't mentioned what a God is showing me. I said, so we can study, but there's some stuff that when God really talking to you, it ain't going to be in no books. There's some stuff when God really talking to you, your mentor didn't tell you. Your best friend can't teach you. Your teacher can't teach you. Because when God gets ready to anoint you, he just takes you to a whole nother different level. Ruth didn't ask for no bro ass. Everybody want a good woman. And everybody want a good man. But Ruth didn't run around asking for no bro ass. Ruth never said, Lord, send me a man. Read the Bible. There's no way in there, Penny. Well, Ruth said, send me a man. Well, what did she do? Ruth didn't ask for Boaz. She only asked for Naomi because God said Boaz is your prize for being faithful. Ruth 1 and 16. And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And whether thou lodge, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God shall be my God. Ruth said, I ain't going to the club anymore. I ain't joking with them jokers no more. I ain't out there running the streets anymore. I'm going to be right there by the only side, worshiping her God. And her Jesus people will be my Jesus people. <laughs> when she in Sunday school, I'm going to be right there with her. He said, when she come to night, sir, I'm going to be right there with her. He said, wherever they me go, I'm going to go. And God said, because you were faithful, I'm going to give you not the regular, average, ordinary stuff. Ruth, I'm going to give you some stuff that's going to blow your mind because that's your prize. Now, what is the acronym for prize that we've just created? What does pride mean? It means platinum recognition inspired by zealousness over Elohim. God gives you platinum recognition inspired by your zealousness. You heard of jealousy is when people going crazy because you doing something that they don't like. But to be zealous means to be on fire, to have zeal, to be excited, to, to be emotionally attached to, to be unwavering for, to have the fire of the Lord burning within you, to be zealous. Paul said, I bear witness that Israel has a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. So to be zealous for God, he said, look at my zealousness for the Lord. Look at my zeal for the Lord. When you see people shout and praise the Lord, that's their zeal for the Lord. When you see people trying to bless the people of God, you see an example of their zeal for the Lord. When you see people going out there and winning souls over and over and over, they're doing it not for themselves, but that's their zeal for the Lord. I say, God, why use the word recognize and not the word reward? He said, the word reward is for you to see, but the word recognize is for all to see. God said, when I bless you with your prize, everybody going to see it. When I bless you with your prize, everybody's going to be blown away by your prize. Your prize is not just for yourself. It's going to bless other people as well. Tell somebody, I'm a prize fighter. Because Paul said, I press 
toward the mark for the prize of God in his high calling in Christ Jesus. You got to be a prize fighter because the devil is trying to block your fight from getting your prize. The devil is trying to block you from reaching forth toward the mark for the prize. And if you're not a prize fighter, the devil's going to knock you out. Somebody stand on your feet and give the Lord a victory hand clap of praise. Because baby, 